Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at invariant points. Now invariant points are something that can come up within a transformation and we're going to look at what invariant points means, we're going to look at some examples of how you would go about finding an invariant point and then we're going to have a look at some exam style questions where you are using invariant points with different transformations. Now I would suggest before this video that you make sure you have a look at the rest of transformations so that you are very clear on how to do a translation, a rotation and a reflection. Not necessarily an enlargement with this one but you do need to be aware of those other three as they are going to appear on all of these questions. So with that being said let's have a look at these questions. So the first thing that we're going to have a look at is this question here. It says that shape P is transformed so that exactly one vertex is invariant. I'm going to look at what transformation this could have been. So if we're looking at um, one of the vertexes, we're obviously looking at the points on the triangle that I've highlighted and shown for you. And when we're looking at these points, we are going to try and make a transformation whereby the point does not move. Now if we just pick one of those points and we're going to have a look at doing a rotation. So if we put some tracing paper on top of the shape and obviously we trace over the top of the triangle and we'll pick one of these points to have a look at. So I'm going to pick the point by the right angle for this triangle in the bottom left and hopefully you'll see here that when we do a rotation that one of these vertexes is going to be invariant and hopefully just by me doing the rotation you will see what invariant actually is. So if we do a rotation and let's just go 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So if we turn it 90 degrees anti-clockwise it would look like this. Now as you can see the vertex there hasn't moved. So the new shape that we would draw in, although in a different position, that one particular vertex hasn't moved anywhere and that's what invariant is, it means it hasn't moved. Obviously all the other points on the triangle have moved, but just that one particular vertex has stayed in exactly the same place. And that is what invariant means and that's what we're going to be looking at throughout the video. So if we also then rotated it a further 90 degrees, which in total would be a 180 degree rotation, you can still see that the point hasn't moved because of the coordinate that we've rotated it on. And again, we could rotate it a further 90 degrees, which would be a 270 degree anti-clockwise rotation, or of course a 90 degree clockwise rotation if we were going the other way from the start. But that is three different types of rotations just on that vertex, which gives us an invariant point. Now, of course, what we could do is we could have picked any of the other vertexes and we could have done any of these rotations. And all of those different rotations would have allowed us to have one vertex that was invariant. So that is one of the examples that we're going to be having a look at. Now, as well as this, we could, instead of looking at the vertexes, look at any point on the triangle. So if we slightly change the question and we'll change it to this. So shape P is transformed so that exactly one point is invariant, so not necessarily looking at the vertexes. So if we think about some of the points on this triangle that are not a vertex, we could look at these four. Of course, we could have a look at the points on the hypotenuse as well, but looking at that diagonal line is pretty difficult. But of course it can be done, but we're just going to focus on these particular straight lines as when it comes to the GCSE transformations, we tend not to have to look at these diagonal lines unless it's a couple of the specific ones where y is equal to x or y is equal to negative x and neither of these fall into that category. So we're going to look at one of those points and let's think about how we could make an invariant point this time. Now again, we can do this using a rotation. So if we put the tr uh, some tracing paper over the top again and we trace over the triangle, let's put our pencil on one of those points. So let's pick the one down the bottom. So again with this point here, we could actually do another rotation. So let's just do a 180 degree rotation and see what, what it looks like. So if we rotate it 180 degrees, it looks like this. And as you can see, that coordinate on the base of the triangle 
has not moved, so therefore that coordinate would be invariant. So for this particular one, that would be the coordinate 3, 3, and we would be able to say that after this transformation, that particular coordinate there is invariant. So that's another example that we could look at. Of course, we could have picked any of the points on any side of the triangle and done a rotation of any amount of degrees around that point, and that point we had chosen would have been invariant. But this one here looks nice and tidy, and it's a good one for our example. So let's have a look at one more before we have a look at some uh, exam style questions. And that is if I slightly change the question again, I could say this, shape P is transformed so that exactly two vertices are invariant. What transformation could it have been? So let's just think about something else that we could do to find two vertices that would become invariant. And we could do that using a reflection. So if we pick a reflection that we could do, perhaps we could do a reflection in this line, and that is the line y equals 3. So if we do a reflection in that line, you will see that the triangle looks like this. And you can see that on this particular way that I have drawn it, we have these two coordinates on the vertices that haven't moved. They are the same coordinate, they are the same vertices in the same coordinates, and therefore we have two vertices that are invariant. Of course, what we could have done is chose a vertical line. So we could have gone through x equals 2. And as you will see on this one, if we draw our reflection in, we would end up with this triangle. Now with this particular triangle here, again, we have two vertices that are invariant, as you can see there that I've highlighted. So again, this is another type of uh, reflection in this case that gave us two vertices that are invariant. Now obviously we could look at that horizontal line, but we wouldn't have to do this at GCSE level because as you can see, if we draw that reflection line in, it is quite difficult for us to actually say what that line is and it is quite difficult to reflect in as it is not going through either the line y equals x or y equals negative x, which are our diagonal lines that we need to be aware of. But of course, let's just have a look at it for the purpose of this example, because if we did reflect that triangle into that line, it would look like this. And of course, you can see that we have two invariant points, and they are just there. So it can be done in lots of different ways, as with all of these examples that we've just gone over, but we're going to focus on what I would say is the easier style there. Obviously, those previous two were a lot easier for us to do. So that's what we're going to be finding, and as I said, you do need to be quite aware of your different transformations. As we move on to these exam questions that we're going to have a look at now, you're going to see that we need to be pretty comfortable with doing a translation, a reflection, and a rotation. So let's have a look at an exam style question, and let's see if we can figure it out. So for this question here, it says triangle A is rotated 180 degrees about the point negative 2, 0, and it is followed by a translation. So as you can see already, we need to know how to rotate and we need to know how to translate. It says under the combined transformation, one point on triangle A is invariant. So that's one of the points. So that could be anywhere, it could be a vertex or it could be a point on the triangle. It says describe fully one possible translation and then state the coordinates of the invariant point. So for this particular question here, obviously with these type of questions when we are looking at transformations, it's more of an instructional video just so you can get an idea about what invariant points are. Obviously it would be very difficult for you to do this off the screen, but if you would like to draw this out on some graph paper, then please do feel free to have a go and pause the question and see if you can figure it out. So for this particular question here, anyway, we are going to do a rotation. So again, using our tracing paper method, we would stick the tracing paper over and we're going to have to trace over the shape and then do this rotation. So we'll stick the pencil onto the coordinate negative two zero and we need to do a 180 degree rotation. Not forgetting it doesn't matter what direction we go in as it ends up in the same place either way. But if we just do a 180 degree rotation, the triangle ends up just here. So what we need to do is obviously move the pencil out of the way, lift the tracing paper up and trace the shape underneath. And we end up with a new triangle in its new position. And now we need to think about where or how to move this triangle using a translation. And we need to actually describe that in order to get an invariant point. Now there are a couple of different ways that you could do this, but I think what's quite a nice way is just to move the triangle so that the bases are then touching 
uh, in the same line. So what I mean by that is moving the triangle so that this point here, just in the middle, is in exactly the same position. Now that is halfway between a coordinate, so we would get a decimal coordinate there, but it's nice and easy for us to join that up. So in order to do that, we would need to move our triangle three hops to the left, and that would enable us to get our triangle into this position, and then we would need to move our triangle two jumps up, and that would move it up to here. Now that has joined the triangle together, but of course we need to actually write what that translation is. So if we go about writing this down, we need to say a few different things. So for part A here, we do need to say that this is a translation. So that would be our first part of our description. We also then need to say how we are translating it, and that is that we are translating it by a vector. And then we need to write what that vector is. So not forgetting with a vector, left and right is written on the top, so we went left by three, which we would denote by writing negative three, and then it goes up by two, which would be positive two. So our vector would look like this. And that would be our full description there as to how to move it. Of course, there are different ways, and you can feel free to have a go at finding different invariant points for this question, but I think that was probably the easiest way to quickly get us an invariant point in the middle of the base. So for this particular question, if we state the coordinates of the invariant point for part B, then we want to have a look at that coordinate that I highlighted, which is halfway between negative three and negative four. So the X coordinate would be negative 3.5 and the Y coordinate there is one. So the coordinate of the invariant points, which we can see just there, is the coordinate negative 3.5 and one. So that's one type of question that we could have to have a look at where we have found an invariant point. But of course, on this particular question, you could find some different invariant points there. So let's have a look at one more question. And this last one is going to be our last question for this video. So let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so this question here says that the square ABCD is reflected in the line X equals negative one. And then it is followed by a rotation. So under the combined transformation, it says two vertices on the square are invariant. Describe fully the possible rotation. So this one here does specify that we are looking at the vertices. So we are looking at those four points on the outside where the letters are of the square. And first of all, we need to do a reflection. So let's figure out where it goes and the reflection line x equals negative one is this line just here. So if we draw our reflection in, we end up with our square in this position. And of course, the letters we could write in, and they are gonna be reflected too, so they're gonna swap over, and A and D will be on the right, and B and C will be on the left. Now this can really help when we're doing our rotation, because we want those letters to potentially match up if we're looking for two vertices to fall in the same place. So now we're gonna do our rotation, we want to put the tracing paper over the top, we want to trace over the shape, and then we're going to actually rotate it and see what it looks like. So we're going to want to put our pencil somewhere in the middle, and I'm going to pick this point here. Although this is going to be a coordinate that works, of course, when you are doing a rotation and trying to get a match, you might have to guess a few positions and see if you get something to match up. Again, if you're not sure on how to do this, then do check out the full video on rotations. So this coordinate does work, and if I do a 180 degree rotation, although the letters are gonna flip upside down, you can see if I do that rotation, the Ds match up and the Cs match up. So for that particular rotation, we do have a matching two invariant points. As you can see, the C has landed in the same position and so has the D. So for this particular one, we would want to describe this transformation, this rotation. So if we go about describing this, the first thing we would say is that it's a rotation. The second thing we would say is the distance it's gone in. Now this one's gone 180 degrees, so we don't have to give the direction, but we do have to give the point it has been rotated around, and you can see that the pencil there is on the coordinate negative one, two. So we would say it's a rotation by 180 degrees about the point negative one, two. So that's one of our possible solutions. Of course, we could have put the pencil slightly higher on negative one four, and that would have allowed our square to rotate the points A and B into the same position. So that was just one of the other ways that we could have done that. 
Now for this one, there is actually another way. So if we go back to the start and let's think about another rotation that we could have done here because we could have actually had the two opposite diagonal points fall onto the same position as well. And in order to do that, it's not the nicest one, but we can put our pencil on this point here. And that is the coordinate negative one, zero. And that allows us to do a 90 degree rotation. And you'll see when I rotate this 90 degrees, and obviously you can see by doing that, the tracing paper has gone flat again, but you can see that the points D and the point B have ended up in the same position. Obviously the letters will rotate if you've drawn them on your tracing paper, but that's fine. You should be able to see through the tracing paper that they have landed perfectly in the same position. Obviously A and C have switched here, but that's fine because the question only wanted us to find two vertices that are invariant. So that particular rotation works as well, but of course we'd have to describe that. And in order to describe that, we would say that it was a rotation. So the first thing we'd say is rotation. It was 90 degrees clockwise, and that is the second thing that we would say. And the final thing we would say again is the point at which we rotated it round. So this one here was about the point minus one zero. As you can see, the pencil is on minus one zero. And of course, there is another rotation that you could have done here, which would have aligned to different coordinates. And you could have done that higher up on the grid there. I believe it looks like it's landing on minus one six. So there are four different types of rotations that you could do there to get two invariant vertices. And that is all that we're gonna have a look at for these particular questions. So that is the end of the video. So I hope you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please do like, comment and subscribe and I will see you for the next video.